My name's Jill and I've been a film extra for 60 years. Piers Brosnan, uh. Tom Cruise. The most lovely person was David Bowie. So you were an extra with him? Yes. What? Worked with Michael Caine. He just wanted to see the world burn. And there's some people like that in the world. Someone help me. Who's Warren Beatty? Oh no! Oh no! I just need a little bit of help. Hello Jill, welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, yes. Oh, you've got such, Tom, she's got such warmth about her Amazing already. Warmth. And I'm also looking at Jill's face and I'm thinking, what films, what TV shows have I seen Jill in? Yeah. Because she's been in an awful lot. An awful lot. How many have you been in, Jill? Nearly 2,000. What? 2,000? Yes, 2,000 and I've got them all listed. I'm not sure that's possible. It is possible because it's over such, we just said 60 years. Yeah, but hang on. Let's... What's 2,000 divided by 60? <laughs> Silence. You're out of order. You're yeah, out absolutely. of order because you knew. <laughs> you fucking knew. You teed that up for yourself. You're out of line. I don't understand, though. You've been in nearly 2,000 films and TVs or yes. extra shows. But you, it, over 60 years. So did you start when you were when you were born? No. When, no. You're older than 60. I'm much older than 60. Jill, please excuse my fruity language. There'll be a, an awful lot of it. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could. There is no way you do not look old enough to have been in 2,000 different things. Well, I'm 80 now. so You're not 80. I am 80. It's a horrible number. I can't bear it. Why? Well, it's quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah, but, but if Jill, you're 80, you, you look, look like you, incredible. Jill. incredible. You look incredible for 80. Tom's just turned 50. Yeah, it's shame, isn't it? <laughs> oh, Jill, you he teed you up to I say to, you to up pass the compliment I'm on sorry. to me. And you exactly saw the compliment I... and you stuck it in the bin. <laughs> no. Right, uh, Jill, talk us through the start. How did you first come about getting onto TV extras? Right. I was always went to stage school and I was a dancer. And then I thought... A friend said, there's an audition at Butlins. Would you come with me? And I said, what? So live at Butlins, be a red coat, be in the review company. And I was only 15 and I went with her and we both got the job. And I knew my mother would object. So I left her a note on the table and saying, I'm at Butlins in Brighton and I'm in the review company. Sorry, but I had to do it. <laughs> Wow. Was she happy, sad, disappointed, overjoyed? Um, all of the above, yes. Um, shocked, and they came down with my father and with my friend Jenny's parents on the next train the next day, and they went to see the manager, and they, he said, please don't tell me how old they are because I know they're not legally allowed to work, but they're both fine and we'll look after them. And I had a great time. I learned about life. I didn't learn much about life, you know, at stage school and things. So it was great. I had to do all the auditions for knobbly knees, mm. beautiful babies. And then at the evening, used to do the show. So it was great. So that was it. you starting out as a red coat. Yes. But when, when did you then go, oh, fuck it, I'm going to try and get into the acting world? There was a happy holiday maker there who later became my husband and oh. um, we've been married 60 years now. So, it's Hang on, we've got to pause on that. <laughs> we've got to congratulate that. 60-year marriage, that's unbelievable. What's his name, Jill? Jeff. And, yes. Jill and Jeff, Jeff and Jill. Yeah, I mean... What, 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 everything I about it works. Like, it all works. What, well, <laughs> it could have been, what about Jill and Joe? Yes, that would also work for the same reasons. So the more that, so it could have been anyone other than Jeff with yes. a J name that it still works. So your point is invalid. It's still got it's still got to be Jeff though, hasn't it? For everything that Jeff brings. There's you only, don't know Jeff. There's only one. Clearly, there's only one Jeff because Jill's been married to <laughs> him for sixty years. Yeah, good. Yeah. It shows lack of imagination, doesn't it? Really. Yeah, fair, maybe. But unless, unless you fulfil each yeah. other's imaginations, Jill. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh, wow. I thought you were going to there. Okay, so that was when you first met Jeff. So that's when I met Jeff. Then um, I did, I went all over England touring, dancing, dancing. But I knew that couldn't carry on, so I went to the club scene in London and worked in most of the big clubs. There's lots of cabaret clubs there. Um, some were seedy, some were really nice, and I ended up at Murray's, um, which was very super glam, and anybody who came to the country, politicians and film stars, they came to see the show because it was so good. I mean, it was such high standard. What was your, do you remember your first ever extra role? Yes, I do. And it what was, was that then? Something called Just for Fun. And luckily, it was made at some Twickenham Film Studios, which was very near where I lived. Oh, yeah. hang on. Was that Twickenham Film Studios, but they were actually in Teddington? No, they were actually in St. Margaret's. Oh, right. That's just, yeah. Again, that still doesn't make sense. So it's confusing, isn't point. it? That is confusing. Why wasn't it called St. Margaret's Film Studio? Because that's too long. Twickenham Film Studios rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? And it's near to... It's two letters longer, Jill. Well worked out. Well, I don't know. Have you blagged that? I have How blagged do you it. Know that? <laughs> <laughs> it was too quick. It just sounded better. Okay, so just for fun, what was your role? I was behind somebody called Mark Winter, who was a pop star at the time. And I was just a teenage girl in hot pants and just dancing around him and smiling a lot. So it, no, no speaking part at all? No. What was no, the song? No, no. I had no idea. It was one of his hits, and it was all, I mean, full of full of pop stars. Was he like a sort of Marty Wilde, Cliff Richard type? Yeah, he, he was in the sort of same stable as all of them. Oh. They were all sort of of an ilk. Yeah. Um, and they made really good records, fun. Yeah, so... So that was the start. So that was your first one. Yeah. Did it then start? Did you then get a bit of a taste for it and go? I Actually, got, I quite like this. This I, is. I thought this is really great. I thought it's all fun and no responsibility. That's absolutely <laughs> ideal. Yes, it, it suited me. Um, every day was different. Every day you had to check in for work. Sometimes they'd say there was no work for you. Sometimes they'd say. Oh, could you be at Shepparton at 6.30 tomorrow morning? You're going to be whatever. It could be anything. Waitress. Anything. That is so much fun. But if the definition of boredom, Jill, is knowing exactly what you're doing every day and every day being the same, yours is the opposite. Exactly. You could, you could be in a different outfit, being a different person every single day every of the week. Every single day. Whoa. 2,000 times. <laughs> yes. Whoa. In this different places, mind. different locations. And, right, so we famously know that extras don't have speaking parts and they can be chopped. But how did you find that then? Were you, did you want bigger parts or did you love the fact that you never knew what you were going to be and that there'd be a costume for you every day? I sort of played with speaking parts and I did quite a few commercials and I did, Modeling for the ugly agency, which is what? Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa! This is getting stranger and stranger. Hang on, there's an agency that employs. (laughs) (laughs) Are they still going? Yes, they certainly are still going. Well, I. uh, Where do Where do I sign? Uh, (laughs) The baldy ugly section. You fit that. You'll be ideal. Thanks, Jill. (laughs) Thanks, Jill. Really hit it home. Okay, so you did some for the ugly. Yes, for I mean. Yes, for years, about 30 years I was with Uglies. But they used to do auditions and they used to call you in one at a time and say, so-and-so from Top Models, so-and-so from another posh agency, and Jill Goldstone, ugly. (laughs) 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 Um, So Just For Fun was your first extras part. What are some of the big ones that you, you know, not not show off about, but would like, you know, you go, well, I was in this and I was in that one. You must have been in some big ones if you've been into for 2000. I was in practically every film that was ever made in England, yes. Because That's genuinely true, isn't it? That's not... Because I belong to the FAA, um, Film Artists Association, which you had to belong to in those days. It was very unionised. And for my television work, I had to belong to equity. So... Um, Yeah, so all the big films that came um, and went, um, I don't know, 
fiddle on the roof. Um, I love one of my very If I was a rich man, I'd little, I'd little, I'd little, I'd little, um, That's a song by... Uh, Tupple. Who? Tupple. No, Gwen Stefani. Sample Tupple. What do you mean, so she oh, nicked really? it? Did she nick it? Mm. If I was a rich girl... I'll have all the money in the world. If Nicked I was it all a off wealthy. top pole first. Really? Oh. He sang it in Fiddler on the roo doo 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 That's not going to work. <laughs> was that the best song in Fiddler on the Roof, do you think? No. Yeah, you're right. Sunrise, Sunset. Oh, was, but I mean, I've, I've, Anna Tevka's quite a nice song, isn't it, as well? Yeah, it was it was lovely, but they we were doing it on a stage at Pinewood and they had all the Russians coming in, Cossacks on horses in the studio running at us and Norman Jewison was the director and he said, get closer to the horses, run faster. And it was terrifying, but I survived. Yeah, I was going to say health and safety must have changed quite considerably. Quite considerably, I think. So this is a list that uh, Ryan's given us here now of some of the big ro big films that you've been in. Yeah. You're in A Clockwork Orange. What? Yeah. Twickenham Studios. Oh, really? Mm. What part did you play? Passerby. Passerby. I mean, I what? it's going to be great No, here. no, but I like it. I like it. <laughs> no, like, I what's... like it. The episode is about extras. Yeah. So Passerby is a huge role. Like, it, that's, oh, that's, that's huge role. for that's us. That's the main role. Oh, my goodness. Can, <laughs> like, what, what sort of uh, work would have gone into being the passerby then? Did you... When you stand here, when the assistant <laughs> puts his finger down, you walk. <laughs> and, uh, and, and you were good at that. Very good. So at any I point, what, what, <laughs> what about not being good at it? Have you ever had a role that wasn't passerby? Because clearly you nailed that one. Have you ever had a role that you've gone, I'm thinking Phoebe from Friends, mm -hmm. when she was on one of Joey's episodes and she was a nurse and she had to move one tray to this <laughs> side of the room to the other. That's all That's all she had to do. And every time she'd be shaking or she do, she just couldn't do it. Um, have I've you ever had, had a role similar to that? I've you had a role very similar to that. Tom Selleck came over to do Magnum, oh. and I was a waitress, and I had a tray of drinks. Um, Tom Selleck was divine, lovely man. He wore a moustache magnificently in, in that did. role. He did. He was a very From handsome man. Three men and a little lady? Yeah. And He made his name in Magnum P.I. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. But he had a sidekick who was his butler in the thing, and this butler said, now... When you're given the cue to give Mr. Selleck a drink, make sure you hit your mark because he's only got one suit and we don't want it messed up. So I looked at him. I thought, I'm a professional. What are you talking about? <laughs> Anyhow, um, it came to the take. They said, action. I walked. Tom Selleck walked. Bumped straight into each other. The drinks right <laughs> over him. <laughs> and I was just... Horrified, I didn't want to look at this other guy, and I didn't know what to do. I said, "I'm so sorry." He said, "They altered our plan. They altered our moves when you weren't looking." Oh. I said, "But you might have told me." And so Tom Selleck put his arm around me and said, "Shall we go and get a cup of tea?" I said, "Yes, please." <gasps> yes, he was so really it, nice. Well, it ended well then. You've ruined yeah. his. You've ruined his only suit, but it ended well with a nice cup of tea. And, then, Tom and the next day, when he saw me walking up the path, he said, "Don't go near that woman. She's going to drown me again." <laughs> Classic Selleck. <laughs> so that was one you couldn't get right. Um, uh, lots. What about? Well, there's more than one that you couldn't get right. No, Jill. Surely not. I tried not to. What else were you shit at? <laughs> I don't know. I was um, a seal once. And sorry. A like a Navy and seal or a seal as in, <coughs> arr, arr, arr. Yeah, one of those, the second. And <laughs> Jill, why didn't they get a seal? <laughs> because it wouldn't go up. It was an igloo and it had an arch coming, you know, a sort of a tunnel way. And I could always get up the tunnel way being a dancer. I was quite <laughs> Be very careful with that <laughs> sentence. <laughs> and then I had to appear in the igloo. But uh, hang on, dressed as a seal. But I only rehearsed not dressed as a seal. Then they dressed me as a seal, but cut off my arms because the flippers weren't very mobile. And 
the costume was big and I had no legs because they were in the tail. And I got <laughs> halfway up the tunnel and I got stuck. Because you so couldn't use your flippers I couldn't properly. use my flippers. They kept saying, try and move. But I was too big for the tunnel and I had no way of manoeuvring. Why <laughs> Why didn't you practice with the, in the seal suit? They You're going to be a seal. They didn't ask me. If they asked me to, of course I would have done. But they thought I'd get hot. Well, I got very hot, stuck in the tunnel. Also, you're in an igloo. You're surrounded by ice. <laughs> Polystyrene, actually. <laughs> but the props department really didn't want to take a hacksaw to it and ruin the set. No. And so they kept saying, look, can't we pull her out front ways? Can't we pull her out back ways? I don't want to cut up this the whole set. But oh. in the end, after half an hour... They knew that I was sort of hyperventilating and I couldn't breathe. And so they had to take the hacksaw. And that was scary and really noisy and thinking it's coming down on your head. So they did end up chopping the set up? Yes. Oh, no. They had to get me out. Did they get the scene, though? Did they get what they wanted out they of it? They did. Oh, right. They built it. Ultra yeah. professional, yeah. yeah. Um. Get that one. Get that one. Mm. Um, what's the most takes you've ever had to, like... <laughs> Whilst we're on the subject of not quite getting it right. Not you, me. Not you. No, not me. Okay, have me. you ever been with someone, a, yes. a similar passerby or a similar extra? I think that... on Reds, Oran Beatty made the co-star do it 36 times. Whoa. What's he getting out of that? Is he just a perfectionist? Or was he being a bit of a fool? I don't know what he was being. We were always going, not again. 36 <laughs> times? Yes. 36? I know. But uh, if you go to EastEnders, or uh, it's got to be done in one or two takes. That's it's all over. I mean, you know, it's different. American films are very different from English films. In what way? They've got more money. Everything's bigger. Everything's shinier, brighter. Would better. you say better? Yeah, because food in an extra's life is very important. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's all according to what catering company you have. Um, but Americans ha don't break for lunch breaks and things. Um, they have a running buffet all day long. And so when you're free, you go and eat. What items could we expect to find at an American running buffet? Everything. Like? Everything. Smoked salmon to chicken to fish to vegetarian. Fruit. Fruit was is always... A great thing because the location caterers normally don't have much fruit or anything like that. So that was always a big come on. Um, and cakes and anything That's you wanted. Tremendous. That seems like a completely different outlook on how Ricky Gervais uh, portrayed extras catering in his um, series Extras, where the chef hands him a bit. Have you seen this, Tom? Mm. His chef hands him the tray of mashed potato sausage and mash and he says there's a hair in my mash and the chef just puts his fucking big mitt in it scoops out the hair and then flicks it off and he goes brilliant yeah no you got it yeah no you definitely got it out and then cleared off so the it's nothing like that in the no. american films then not in american but not even in english some terrific caterers you know you saw a caterer you think oh thank goodness it's them you know fab food because you know, there's the work isn't the thing. It's the hanging around. You hang around a lot. And the food is mightily important. And how you're treated, it's very important. I've got so many questions. Everything that Jill says, Joe, I've got a follow-up question. I'm desperately trying to hang on to them. So I'm going to try and tick off a couple of these quickly, Jill. You mentioned EastEnders. Is it true you were in the first ever episode? The first episode, yeah. <laughs> That's not it. Uh, we've Doof. done this. <laughs> How many doofs are in EastEnders? Jill, what would you say? Six. Six? I don't know. Nine. Nine? Go on then. Da, 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 da. Oh, we've got to get to the end. Doof, 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 doof. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what has happened there? You dropped the drum kit. What were... <laughs> I'm right, I know. Let's quickly move on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what were you in the first ever episode of EastEnders? A party goer, yeah. A party goer? Um, yeah. Where was the party? In the Queen Vic. Oh, oh, brilliant. So this is when Dirty Den and Andrew were running it. Dirty Den right. and Andrew. Yeah, Angie. 
yeah. through. <laughs> that would be a, a novel partnership. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly for Wolford in 1985. Yes, I mean, that would have been good. But um, we had to shoot it again because a friend of mine was directing it and they didn't give this dog, Roly, a big enough showing. <laughs> so the producers got really cross about it sacked him and we did it again so I got two days work on it nice nice and that was at Elstree was it at Elstree oh, yes. yeah because have you ever been to Elstree Film Studios Joan where's Elstree Film Studios at Elstree Elstree no <laughs> edge of North Fucking West hell, London these two have North teamed East up London. haven't they North West London <laughs> if you go to Elstree Film Studios what's it look like well it looks like Albert Square because it's a set so you can walk around Albert Square. Why would I have been to Elstree Film Studios if I haven't been on EastEnders? They film a number of things there. Name one. Holby City. Holby City. Right, but I haven't been on Holby City either. Here's another one you haven't been on. Uh, Top of the Pops. This is the difficulty. Fucking hell. They don't do Top of the Pops, mate. No, they used to. They haven't done it for 20 odd years. Back to the, the supplementary questions, right, Jill. Yep. I don't... Listen, Ryan put this on a piece of paper in front of us, so please don't blame me. Was there a moment with Warren Beatty where Warren Beatty wanted to give you a starring role? Um, he in... offered me to go to Scotland. Is that a euphemism or is that he literally... <laughs> no, offered me to go to Scotland. Scotland. <laughs> Would that be good or bad as a What's a euphemism about that? <laughs> well, Warren Beatty was Scotland, famous Scotland. for being um, quite the romantic. He was very romantic. I thought he was lovely. Be better or worse, or dishier or less dishy than Tom Selleck? This oh. Year. Oh. Was he? Oh. Tom Selleck was a really nice man. Um, I'm sure Warren Beatty is a really nice man. Um, but, yeah, he was fun. Was he? Yeah. So he would talk to you as an extra? He would he use some of his Warren Beatty charm on you as an extra? Yes. Someone help me. Who's Warren Beatty? Oh, no. Oh, no. I just need a little bit of help. In his time, yeah, a very, very big film star, and still is. Right, what do, you, what do we think his best film was, Jill? He was in Bonnie and Cl uh, Bonnie and Clyde Bonnie with Clyde. Faith Dunaway. It was fantastic. Hang on, how am I spelling his name? B T I B E A T Y. Warren B E A T Y. He was briefly going out with Madonna at one point. He's been out with most yeah, people. Yeah, that's, that's fair, Jill. Point. That is fair. <laughs> My, I'm looking at him now. Yes. I've no idea. Warren Beatty? No. Nope. Let me have a look at some of his films. Not the whole film. <laughs> <laughs> that could take a while. <laughs> oh, I do sort of recognise him. Yeah. yeah. Sort of so <laughs> Jill's really fucking giving me the eyes here. Not the good not the good eyes, the bad eyes. You know. What is this story, Jill? And again I'm blaming Ryan for this. Um, involving Warren Beatty, Jack Nicholson yeah. and you. Pardon? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what? Sorry, what? We were all working on Reds. And Reds being a film. Reds being a film. Right, yeah. Which Warren Beatty was not only directing, he was starring in as right, well. Yeah. And he used to come and sit with me and said, oh, will you come up to Scotland with us? So I said, yes, I could do. He said, I want you to meet a friend of mine. And he took me... And there was Jack Nicholson just slouched in a chair, just looking like Jack Nicholson does with the sunglasses on the end of the nose, leopard skin boots, um, really cool. And just sort of looked at hi, Jill. I think we're all going to Scotland. I thought, oh, no, we're not. <laughs> no, 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 we're not really we're not going to Scotland anymore. Um, <laughs> no. Wow. So there was that moment of like, mm, mm, actually, no. I'm all right no, no, here. No. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I know exactly. Edgerton's fine. Right. Okay. That was that one that you go fuck off, Jack Nicholson. <laughs> well, I'm just I'm I'm overly obsessed with why they wanted to go to Scotland. Like, because they were filming there next next the next. Oh, week. I, see. Next I thought it was I thought it was like a it wasn't weekend like a trip. Oh, no. They're going to go to no no far. <laughs> far. No, <laughs> they were. That was the next location. Right. Shall we have a little break and then we'll get into the day in the life of an extra? Let's do it. Yeah, like the break. So, I've got to be honest, you are looking magnificent today. What about you? 
You're looking lovely too. I wonder if it's anything to do with our new wardrobe from Hera. I think you might be right, Joe. When you told me I needed a new wardrobe, I was slightly sceptical because it's really hard to find something that works for you, but also works for me. That's the thing though, mate. Hera offer good quality, attainable clothing. And whilst they do specialise in denim and comfortable sweats, they've got a wide range and versatile collection for both men and women. Well, that's good news. Mate, honestly, their stuff is great. It fits lovely, it looks great, and it's super comfy. Where can people find Hera, Joe? You can go and treat yourself to a brand new look at heraclothing.com. That is H-E-R-A clothing.com. Hey, you want a jumper as nice as mine? Go to heraclothing.com. Come on, come on, I'm dancing like this because I feel so good. And I feel so good because I've got my hair of clothes on. If you want to feel as good as I do, look as good as I do in this Hera hoodie that I've got, go to heraclothing.com. Hera. 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 That's H E R A clothing.com. So those were the adverts. Joe, we want to talk about a day in the life of an extra. How does it work, Jill? It works by you phoning in the day before, getting your call time and where you're going to go and what clothes you're supposed to wear. So you arrive on set, you well, you arrive at the film studios, you collect your chit from the second assistant, which has got your name on it, and um, you have to hang on to that to the end of the day. And then they put you in a dressing room, meet all your friends, have a laugh, and wait to be called. And sometimes you wait forever. I've waited on Victor Victoria three days in a room. Before doing, it, before before doing, doing anything. anything? Yes. Just arrived each day, got my money at night, next day. And then I was on set for like two seconds. Some people might look at that and go, well, it, that sounds quite lonely. But do you um, end up making, is there like a, there was a like, friendship circle there, that there you end up like developing? There was like a sort of a whole group of us. And you're only a certain type. You can only be what you are. You can't be sort of, I couldn't be a tall, glamorous model. And so I was only suitable for certain things. But I was you know okay for quite a lot of things so you met the same people the same as you time and time again and I'm still friends with them um it was fabulous you know oh how you doing what you doing I want to go through this list Jill because I've just glanced down it's blowing my mind so we've talked about a clockwork orange where you were a passerby <laughs> the elephant man oh you were the elephant man fuck <laughs> off <laughs> wasn't that Not John Merrick <laughs> Well, or yeah. John Hurt. Depending. John Hurt, yeah. actually. Oh, right. Um, yeah. Who did I say? You you actually said the correct name for the Elephant Man, but the man who played John Merrick in the film. Yes. Was oh, right. John Hurt. Yes. Oh, okay, so we're both correct. Yeah. Both right. Yeah, yeah. okay. It's a weird left-handed handshake. Yeah. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, I did two days on that. The first one was at the London Hospital where they were doing an operation without anaesthetic on a minor that got caught in the machinery. And... Because it was in the actual room where they did these operations, tying him down, and I was a nurse holding a tray. And we always had a nurse on set to say whether they were doing it mm -hmm. right. And they said, Jill, if you don't breathe in a minute, you're going to faint. I said, I can't bear the screams <sighs> and the blood. I mean, I know it's all false. I know it was all being filmed, but it felt real. I thought it was awful. That's the Jill's immense credit, I think, as an actor, Joe, that she's immersed herself so fully in the role that the fake blood and the actor's screams have triggered that reaction. I didn't like it. Like, um, what's the, what's it, what do they call it with an actor when they, like, <laughs> pretend to... Method be, acting? Method, you're like a method extra. <laughs> but you get extra. proper into it. Right? Mm, <laughs> <sort of. laughs> yes. That's a no, that's definitely <laughs> not. So that's the elephant man. 
Flash Gordon. Yes. Um, Flash. Uh, that happened about a second late than I thought it would. It's almost like it took <laughs> time for my words to, to reach you. Is that from that? Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was actually from Sillet Bang. Uh, commercial. Have you done that one? No. Oh. Brian Blessed. Did you meet Brian Blessed on that one? Yes. Nice man. Very, very loud. nice. Very nice. Hello, my name's Brian Blessed, and I'm bloody here to read you a story. You'll bloody get on with that, Tyler. I loved him in Blackadder, one of my favorites. Oh, oh, Blackadder was, was fantastic. fantastic. Been in Blackadder? Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> I love how casual that is. What You've you been in Blackadder? Blackadder? Yes, but only for a day. That's I not mean, the point. It's, not, it's not, still it's so a... fucking cool just to go, yeah, I was in Blackadder. Roll Jill in Blackadder? Um... In, I think it was one of the wars with the kings, um, just townswoman. Townswoman. Nothing. Oh, yeah, that was the one with uh, Richard the... Who's he? Uh, Richard the Second. No? Who played Richard the Second? He gets his head chopped off in the Battle of the... Uh, they were on a field. Bosworth. Bosworth. That's it, yeah. And, uh, no, OK. Yeah, move on. <laughs> we almost made a breakthrough there. <laughs> <laughs> and we realised we weren't going to yeah, break through. We backed depth. off it. Out of our depth, we need to get out of that one. So that's Flash Gordon. Uh, the next one on the list, Joe. Um, these are all massive films. Superman. Super. Oh yes. Yeah, go on. What do you remember about that one? Why did you oh. do that? You went. Oh yeah. Was it a Christopher Reeve thing? It was Christopher Reeve. So. But we were down in the tube station. He was dressed as Superman, and he had to put his hand up to stop the <gasps> tube train like that. Oh, yeah. But unfortunately, because it was an unused tube station, he saw the rats running behind him. And he said, he just freaked. He said, get me out of here, get me out of here. Well, and, well, he, and he's Superman. No, no, Superman's freaked you out You can't do rat. that, Jill. That's, <laughs> I know. You're out of order. I know. You've he come on here so <laughs> and you've dispelled the reality of Superman being a Superman. Well, he didn't he's like He's scared I of rats. Know. No, no, because Especially actually, you had fact on, on this, we've we've conditioned ourselves to be scared of rats, and it's bollocks. Like it's the only reason not. it is the only reason we're scared of rats is because of the plague, but the plague hasn't been around for years, Jill. They've got years. Claws and no, no, tails. no. Yeah, but they're not. They're all right, mate. Fucking. Why are we scared of rats, but not scared of fucking dormouse, dormice? Dormice haven't got tails, haven't they? No, little little tiny ones. Yeah, about but, a tip mouse. They've got a tail. A tit mouse. Yeah. Um, That's I'm not, not a sure thing. about that. That's not a thing. <laughs> is it, is not David Attenborough. What? <laughs> <laughs> can I? Can we go back to Superman? Yes. Yeah, sorry. So, um, Warren Beatty uh, was sexier than Tom Selleck. Christopher Reeve. I'm in... not rating them. <laughs> well, that's exactly what I'm going to ask you to do because Christopher Reeve is in quite a fitting pair of tights, and you've seen that close up in a tube station. I don't know. We were all laughing so much that <laughs> it's in really Superman that. scared of rats. Breaking news. That's and, fine. Oh, yeah. that's horrible. No, you've said it, Jill. I know I have, and it's true. But it's <laughs> poor thing. I'd be wouldn't want them running around my feet. Horrible. Ch chariots of fire. What were you in Chariots of Fire, Jill? I was at the memorial service for one of the um, actors that had died. Yeah. It was a very moving scene. So you're a mourner. A mourner. A mourner. Yes. And was that towards the end of the film? I think it might have been at the very beginning of the film, and then they come out onto the steps. Mm? Yes. Yeah, they do. They come out onto the steps, and they're interviewed about it. Yes. Bingo. Bongo. Have you not seen Chariots of Fire? Never heard of it. What? Do you ever go to the movies? <laughs> uh, I used to go on my own a lot. Oh. What's wrong going to movies on your own? You might as well, mightn't you? Well, you don't talk to them. Do you know what I mean? When I'd, I'd say to Daisy, my wife, when she'd come up when we were courting, oh. um, I'd say, you want to go to the cinema? She's like, fucking hell, again? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I really like going to the movies. Like, yeah, and she's definitely. like, yeah, but I don't get to talk to you. I'm like, that's why we're going. <laughs> um, Little Shop of Horrors, I know that one. Yeah. That that would have been a fun one to be on. A great fun we, one What were you, a I was plant? a reporter. A oh. reporter. Oh. Trying to get the story of this... A plant that ate people, yeah. No, no, uh, no lines in that one though. No lines in most of them. No. no li have you had a line in any of them? Yes, loads. Oh, not really your bag. 
Not really. My never, dad. It's never really interested you at all. But I don't want to be famous. It no. must be awful. No, but um, well, she wants the fun without the responsibility. I, want, We've I don't want this. responsibility. I get that. I but had a kid, a husband, a life, and I just wanted to work, and it was terrific work. I loved it. But you've done. You've, the irony in that you didn't want to be famous, but you've now done so many of it that you have now I'm become famous. famous. <laughs> I know. My husband <laughs> said that the other day. He said, "Who oh, you did what?" And then I thought, well. At 80, I might as well. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, You're embracing it. You're doing it. The Muppet movie. Now, now yeah. this is one I have seen. Uh, but I don't have think you seen a Muppet Christmas in Carol? Yes, in um, Battersea Park. Mm. Is it, and you're a, pa- a passerby in that one? Passerby. Okay, you're fucking nailing this one. <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, just... Um, a peasant woman. A peasant woman. <laughs> At least you weren't <laughs> a Nazi. Very pleasant peasant woman, not a Nazi. <laughs> carry on no. films. Which carry on films? Um, about three quarters of all of them. Really? They, they made them twice a year. Um, usually being, I mean, a nurse was my thing. So carry, so doctor, carry on. Carry yeah. on matron. Carry on nurse. Um, carry on at your convenience. Carry on Cleo. And so it goes. Carry on, Cleo is the one with the amazing Frankie Howard line, isn't it? Yeah, um, Frank, um, not Frankie Howard. Um, Kenneth Williams. Oh, infamy, infamy. Infamy, infamy. Oh, I They've fucking love this, Jill. I love this. I love this. When we get a guest on and they put Tom in their place, <laughs> fucking love I'm this. I'm so sorry. No, you do this more. <laughs> 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 Mr. Bean, been in Mr. Bean. Yes. What were you in, Mr. Bean? Passerby. Oh, you're really good at this, actually. <laughs> Hang on, I've just seen it. James Bond. Yes. Fuck Multiple off. James Bond. Multiple, Bonds. <gasps> Multiple right. James Bond. Because Bonds. they were made in England. Were they at Pinewood? Uh, at Pinewood, yeah. Right. And uh, which Ascot James... Racecourse oh. once, yeah. Which right. was that one? Um, that was with Roger Moore. Roger Moore. Um, oh, hello uh, there, Jill. Uh, hello. Roger Moore. How are you? Was it a view to a kill? <laughs> I've... They just all merge into one. So you've been in multiple James Bonds. Yes. And we got we are doing a rating system here because it has to be because it's James Bond. Let's mm. have you been in one with Tim Allen. Tim Allen. Tim, uh, Tim Dal- Timothy Dalton. <laughs> I, I love mean, Tim Timothy Dalton. Dalton. Okay, so He's he only did favorite. one, did he? I think he only did one or two. No, he did two. He, he did, did Living two. Daylights two. and he did. License to Kill. Okay, so yeah. Timothy Dalton, darling. But I also did Scarlet with him, and um, I was standing in for Scarlet O'Hara, and he used to like to do the love scenes with me because he didn't really get on with who he was doing the love scenes with, and <laughs> it freaked me out. I mean, he was so lovely, and he knew it freaked me out, and he was just really lovely. Is he, t- is he Tim Dalton in the industry, or is he Timothy? Cause Tim. That- Tim, yeah. What other bonds would you have been involved with in? Uh, what other James Bond oh. were you in? Okay, uh, who was your favourite James Bond? Uh, if Timothy I j- Dalton, I suppose. Um, who was the one? Um, the more recent one, the, the younger more recent one. Brosnan? one. Piers Brosnan. Piers Brosnan. Mm. Uh, Handsome man. He was in my the bond. flesh. Yeah. He's almost really like a mix handsome. between Selleck and Beatty. Like if you combine... Why do you keep going back to (laughs) Selleck and Beatty? They've made a massive impact on Jill. Yeah, that's true. Fair enough. But Piers Brosnan, oh, he... He was was really... He was... He was just handsome. What about... Who's your Bond, Tom? Like my grown-up was Piers Brosnan, so I associate Bond with that he's my Bond. Who's your Bond? My my growing-up one, Joe, was Roger Moore. Was it actually? But I prefer Connery. Why, why, do love, why, been... why, why do you love Sean so much? <laughs> why, 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 why that one? Oh. Uh, hang seen... on, hang on, let me get it right. Yeah. I will fucking see you, Jimmy. Fuck you. <laughs> Are you her smoking a mush money penny? Why was Sean Connery sh- your favourite, Tom? That was significantly better than your first pass at it. Thank you. I had to get into character. That's, <laughs> I'm part of a method acting extra role that Jill taught me. Mm, I think that I just found Roger Moore too cheesy, Joe, by the end. Oh, was he? He was a bit cheesy, Roger Moore, wasn't he? He was. He was a different sort of Bond. I mean, Connery was sort of more hard man. Hard edge, wasn't he, yeah. 
you know, more of an edge to it. Yeah. yeah. I uh, watched some of those films back in lockdown with my kids, Jill, oh. thinking they'll love this. <sighs> there were some problematic moments, um, which there were because they're old films. The bits where, for example, in uh, with Pusha Galore, where um, hang on, Bond is there was what? a woman called Pussy Galore. Yes. Played by Honor Blackman. That was her actual name in it. Yes. Right, and that was never... I don't care what era you're <laughs> in, mate. That was never brought up. Like, who the fuck has named her Pussy Galore? Really? Really, Jill? Yes, really. I don't... What era? What year was that film? 60s. Yeah, mid-60s. Fuck off. They <laughs> literally got away with calling someone Pussy Galore. Yeah. Th that's like going, oh, look at... Dick love it over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was in the, the follow-up film. That's wild. Okay, sorry, Tom. Carry on with the... No, boss. that was one of the problematic things. The other thing, Jill, was there was a lot of forced kissing in retrospect. There was a lot of James trying to kiss someone, the woman basically saying no, and then Bond basically making it. It was a bit problematic at times. Watching it with the boys, you'd have to sort of say, yeah... We don't do we, that anymore. This doesn't that happen anymore. now, boys. Right, she says no, you walk away. Yep. No is no. Good talk. So we, at the end of that, like, can we get your favourite Bond? Well, I have to say Timothy Dalton because I oh. just loved him. Okay. <laughs> I actually think Sean Connery is probably mine. I loved him in the one that he was in Catherine Zeta-Jones with. Entra Entrapment or something? Entrapment. Yeah. Entrapment. Mm. Oh. With the laser scene. Yeah, mm. so good. They were really good in that. I loved him in that. I don't know what that's got to do with He's Bond. He's a terrific actor. I mean, just a terrific actor. Oh, that's fantastic. I, love, I loved uh, the, the Rock. He was in The Rock. Mm. That was a good one of mine as well. Yeah, I really enjoy that one. <laughs> um, uh, there's no polite way of asking this, Jill. Uh, but you must have come across some actors that are bellends. <laughs> Surely. Surely. Like. Well, some, yeah. Some. Hmm. Care to name any of them? No, I wouldn't oh, care right, to name okay. any of them. Care to um, just elaborate on s what some actors would be like if... Say Tom was a diva, for example. Let's say Tom's the actor. Let's role-play him okay. as being a bellend towards staff or other extras. What sort of things would Tom be up to? I think stars i mean like really big stars were never divas because they'd made it it was the people on the way up who wanted to make an impression that there was problems with but being an extra you were sort of like they didn't talk to you because you were an extra so why why should they talk to you or even acknowledge your existence did you ever resent that though did you no. ever that never pissed you off whatsoever? Not at all. Why should it piss me off? I'm going to hell. get money at the end of the day. Yeah. That's my job. Yeah. I do it the best I can. And bye. Just so happy. Jill's yeah. just so happy. So yeah. if there was a star, like has there been a star who, for example, has some sort of don't look at me? Well, yes. Well, that thing came up with Tom Cruise. Oh. Um we were all, he was doing, um, what, what's his series? Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible, Impossible yeah. yeah. We were in Harris School. We were all sitting, waiting for him to appear on set. And suddenly the assistant director comes out and says, please, no one look at Mr. Cruz. What's no he, one look at him? No one look at him? No one look at him. What does he think is going to happen if people look at him? But it how do I know that it was Tom Cruise that sold them to say that? Or was it the assistant director or director uh, being, say. saying, yeah. or his sort of collection of people saying, no looking at Mr. Cruise? So it might, he might have been lovely. I don't know. Never looked at him, so I don't know. <laughs> Never found out. <laughs> Never found out. Never found out. What about your favourite? Has there been an actor that's actually engaged or yes. you've actually turned around and gone, oh, they're my favourite? Not in terms of looking, they're just a lovely, lovely person. The most lovely person was David Bowie. David Bowie? Mm. Sorry, what happened to your voice there then? David. David. David Bowie. Why are you saying David? <laughs> that sounds sort of how it sounds. 
Zavid. 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 What were you in with? Z well, I was an extra with him in his very first film called The Virgin Soldiers. And he was an extra. And if you look under IMD, it says Jill uncredited and David Bowie uncredited. So you were an extra with him? Yes. And he was just one of the squaddies. It was all army based. What? And so we all hung out together. Um, it was great. We were at an airfield. We were doing dances and mess things. And, you know, he was starting out and he said he was writing songs and didn't take much notice of that one. Um, he was fine. He was just lovely, ordinary, very, very ordinary. Then about 20 years, 25 years later, I was at the BBC doing a programme called Baal. And he was doing a very launching scene with um, Zoe Wanamaker. And we were just sitting at tables. And I was with this boy called David, who also worked on Virgin Soldiers. And David Bowie finished his scene and said, No, you from somewhere. I can't think. And I said, Well, Virgin Soldiers. <gasps> yes, he said. Oh, he said, Well, let's get a cup of tea. Got to talk about it. He said, Isn't it amazing? We're both still working. I Love thought, it. yeah, we are both still working, but you're working at a bit of a different <laughs> end of the scale of things by that time. I mean, he was really famous and he just wanted to talk about his early days. And he was no side or no pretensions or never mentioned how, what a megastar he was and how talented he was. He was just ordinary and nobody like that could be ordinary. And I didn't want to be starstruck. And so I just thought, relax into it. Just go with the flow. He's a really nice guy. He's probably a bit bored. And there we Wants go. Wants to have a cup of tea with Jill. That is such a lovely story. It is, isn't it? it so to actually nice. have someone as mega as him and then 20 years later, remember you. Remember. Now, hang on, I know you from somewhere. <laughs> oh, but that's brilliant. I love that. What yeah. about Michael Caine? Have you worked with Michael Caine? Worked with Michael Caine, yes. What's he like? I only told you, blow the f bloody doors off. <laughs> that's not for you, that's not bad. <laughs> Hang on. It's part of my method again. Master, Master Bruce. Give me a Master Bruce one. Master Bruce? Yeah, Batman. He's the butler. Master Bruce? We once came across this guy who didn't know why he was stealing all the rubies. That's, that's not bad. bad. He just wanted to see the world burn. And there's some people like that in the world. And you just can't do anything about it. This is one of your best ever impressions. I only told you to blow the bloody doors off. You've worked with Michael Caine? Yes. Lovely? Lovely. Oh. Lovely. Do the night shoot. Long queue. Um, when you're working all night, I did learn very early on that you must eat when they gave you food because you don't stay awake. You know, you get really tired. So we were all standing at the chuck wagon and pouring of rain, cold night, three in the morning, he stands behind me. So I said, oh, excuse me. I said, you're in the next scene. I think it would be best if you just go up the front and get your food. Nice. And he said, no, not at all. We're all working together. And anyhow, you're getting wet. So he put his coat over. No, not at all, darling. You're getting wet, and here's my jacket. <laughs> no, you, that wasn't as good. Go back into the Master Bruce one. Because okay, yeah. Uh, Master Bruce. <laughs> no, no, you're all right. No, fuck you it. You made him too cockney. <laughs> no, no. Now, now. No, no. <laughs> no, no. This... No, no. No, no. Slow it down a bit. No, no. Yeah. We're all working together That's on it. this. That's it. Here's my jacket. You're getting soaking wet, Ellie. I hate to say it, he doesn't talk anything like that normally. Oh, for fuck's <laughs> sake. What's he talk like normally, then? Just normal. What do you mean, just normal? <laughs> well, slightly cockney, but I mean... But not over... Right, not I fucked like it. that. I really <laughs> fucked it. <laughs> oh, so he was just normal with you, then? Yes. Oh, lovely. Um, You've spoken quite a lot about not really being bothered about being the centre of attention or no. stepping out to be a, like a, 
a full on actor. You just like the way. You, yeah. No responsibility. Just yeah. slip in, do your job, and slip out again. Yes. But you've changed your mind recently, haven't you? Only because these things have been offered to me. I didn't go after them, and and Anthony made the film Jill Uncredited. So now you've become a star of your um, own documentary yes, film. Yes. Yes. Called Jill Uncredited. Yes. And it's now streaming on Movie. Movie, yeah. Well, how did that come about? Um, there was a fans forum that used to look for extras in the background, a guy from L.A. And um, my name kept coming up. So Anthony said, would you like to meet me? So we met at the Lensbury Club. Um, we talked. I thought he was totally divine. And he said, I said, here's my 2,000 films I've been in, so which were all documented. And so he said, I think about it. He said, would you be interested? And I said, yeah. And I've been doing all the film festivals, and it's been amazing. I thought I couldn't cope with it. When I first, my first film festival was in London, and I had to beg my son to come over from America to escort me because I was so frightened. I thought, how can I see myself, just me on the screen, and then do a question and answer session afterwards? I thought, I'd never be able to do that. I'd never be able to do that. And but it was great fun. I loved it. So you loved becoming the star for once rather than the, yeah. the shadow in the background. Actually, you've stepped forward and now you're the star of your own show, of your own documentary film. I'm very proud of the film. I think Anthony did wonders with it um, because it wasn't, oh, you, you know, you're an extra, you know, tell us about the day. I don't, I don't even speak in the film. <laughs> <laughs> it seems harsh. <laughs> so that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. no, you're happy with that. You're used to that one. Yeah. I love it. Um, he just cut it so that it was it's very arty, but really touching. The woman who was running the Berlin Film Festival, when she came onto the stage to interview us, she was crying. So many of the audience cried. I don't know why they cry. They find it touching. It's very, it's a very, I don't know, intimate film. It's sort of sweet. Very sweet. Well, you've been wonderful to have on. Yeah, this is your very first podcast. Very first. Oh my god, you've been absolutely natural. Brilliant. Absolute natural. Thank you so much, Jill, for coming on. You've been wonderful. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I love you. I love you so hard. <laughs> no. Oh, I just want to pick you up and squeeze your head off. <laughs> Sorry. No, that wouldn't be kind. No. Would it? <laughs> oh my a gentle god. squeeze. A gentle squeeze. Okay.